In today's video, we're going to be going back over the tropics where we still have Tropical Storm Felipe that we're going to be talking about as well as that other very high chance disturbance out there in the Atlantic. We're going to dive into the upcoming pattern as a whole as well as just the storminess, the temperature pattern. And we're even going to take a long range look at the temperature pattern because we do see a big flip and then another big flip coming up in the long range. So there is a whole roller coaster of a temperature pattern upcoming. Now, before we get into things, be sure to check out Prestige Weather in the description and the pinned comment down below where you can gain access to early access videos that we release there weeks ahead of time. So you can check that out. That's going to include our third winter forecast coming up very, very soon. We also do weekly consulting calls as well as other consulting services within there for only $5 a month. Again, in the description and the pinned comment down below. As we quickly take a look at Tropical Storm Felipe here, you can see that we have seen a decrease in the intensity as time goes on. That is good news. However, I think the only bad news here is that the trajectory of this storm is looking quite dangerous as it's potentially going to be heading towards the Bahamas. Would not be surprised to see this potentially de develop a little bit more uh, and further and kind of uh, re-spark things up as it approaches perhaps the United States. So this is kind of creating the possibility for something a little bit more than we originally anticipated. This is going to be one we watch closely. Of course, it could just completely dissipate at this point, but there does seem to be some opportunity for perhaps a little bit more than that. So this is going to be one that we're watching throughout the week or, or more ahead. As we take a look here at the entire Atlantic here, we can see Felipe there and then also Disturbance. We have an 80% chance of development over the next 48 hours and then a 90% chance through the seven days, the next seven days that we do see this one develop. Certainly going to be one that we likely see develop here and possibly going to follow, follow Felipe there as usually tropical systems tend to follow stronger tropical systems. Uh, and as of now, Felipe is stronger, although this one could develop further than even Felipe is. So there is a lot of possibilities on the table at this point. We're, of course, going to be watching this extremely closely. As we take a look at the upcoming pattern, we can see by the time we are reaching uh, just later this afternoon, we do see some storminess up and down the southeast coast and even into the mid-Atlantic. We can also see for the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, and the Ohio Valley, we have some. And then up here in the northwest, we continue to see this storm system take place that we've been kind of calling for for a while now by the time we take a look at wednesday the 27th we continue to see this storminess here for areas in california oregon washington idaho and montana and then for regions here from the upper midwest down through the ohio valley we continue to see this taking place the southeast here we see some thunderstorm activity as is pretty common this time of year of course Thursday the 28th, this looks a little bit more wintry, especially up there in Canada where we see a lot of blue popping up, so snowfall being a big possibility here throughout Washington, Idaho, and Montana, as well as areas in western Canada. We do see some storminess still from the upper Midwest through the Ohio Valley, although that is dissipating a little bit. And over the southeast, it's the same story except for over Florida, we're seeing pretty persistent uh, thunderstorm activity still at that point. Friday on the 29th here, we can see that there is a little bit of some activity there in the Northwest. We also see the upper Midwest dealing with some more persistent activity. And then up and down the East Coast, there is some spotty areas of heavier storminess. One pocket there over about Long Island and New York City and surrounding states. And then down there for Florida and Georgia still, we're continuing to see a lot of that storminess. Saturday, September 30th. What we see here is a 998 millibar low pressure center developing. And what we see as well during that time is this kind of kink in the jet stream. So we see the low here, kink in the jet stream. And this certainly uh, really, really, really does tend to bring a larger storm when we see that jet stream doing that. And we do see somewhat of major impacts from this, although that low never really bombs out like it possibly could in uh, other scenarios. So we see that kind of innocently come to an end. We're left at Monday, October 2nd now as this one's pretty much dissipating, bringing some snowfall over the Rockies and then, of course, some rainfall throughout the surrounding states as well. Um, and really, as you look further eastward than that, we are left with pretty much nothing. By the time we reach Tuesday here on October 3rd, again, a lot quieter. And then for the northwest through the upper Midwest, we continue to see 
storms rolling through there. Let's keep going and for our day there on the afternoon of Wednesday, October 3rd, uh, we do see that there is plenty of storms over the northwest into the northern Rockies. But again, as we look eastward, there's pretty much nothing. And the only opportunity for any type of activity in the central or the eastern states comes as we have a very strong low up here in Canada. And it does look to feature a little bit of a frontal boundary there, a cold front that does feature some cold beginning to pour in a little bit here. This is for October 5th, by the way and some pretty potent storms along that line would be a big possibility. We do see that become a lot more dramatic at the end of the model run here, where we see this really flaring up for the Great Lakes back down through the plains. The Northwest here, uh, we're seeing plenty of storms as another storm system hammers this area as well. Let's quickly take a look at the total precipitation and no surprise that we have pretty large amounts up here in the Northwest. Same story for a lot of the plains, Ohio Valley and upper Midwest. But we have a lot of quieter conditions for the deeper south and then along the eastern seaboard as pretty much no activity happens again outside of Georgia and Florida. And then a little bit here for the northeast coast. Pretty interesting. A lot of that activity is around, but it's all offshore at this point. For the temperature pattern, we see a lot of what we've kind of been calling for that cooler air. I mean, it's been 60s and 70s pretty persistently along the east. That type of air likes to try to hang on here all the way through the upcoming weekend and into early next week, but we eventually by about Wednesday see a full blown warm up in the east. And what we see is this big negative PNA that stands for Pacific North American Oscillation. And this allows for the warmth to surge in the central and eastern states in a very big way. This would be a return of the 80s likely for most folks and it would feel a lot more like summer. And look at this, we just continue to kind of scroll through and all the way through October 11th, we continue to see this negative PNA here over the West and this warmer air just continuing to take hold as a result of that. So we don't really get out of that pattern at all. We're stuck in it really for the most part. Let's take a look here at the longer range pattern. And as you can see, uh, we stay warm in the East like that all the way through about again, that kind of, uh, first to second week time frame of October. But this one says that as we approach this time frame, which will be the 6th through the 13th, we see warmth really prevailing along the West, which would be indicative of the opposite, a positive PNA, and this causes the cold to just sink down into the central and eastern states. We see this take place around, again, the end of the first week, beginning of the second week. And look at that, that sticks around for quite a while through the midpoint of October, and we can just con continue to see this cold air prevail all the way through the, the beginning to midpoint of November. So certainly a very, very interesting pattern ahead and definitely gonna be something we need to watch. Anyway, be sure to subscribe. We're gonna keep you guys up to date with all of this throughout the coming days as we do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I will see you guys in the next video.